Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to the Cricket Walla Chronicles with Ayaz Memon. Hi, this is Pooja from the Fan Garage, and you're listening to the Cricket Walla Chronicles with Ayaz. In today's episode, we're just going to discuss about the time when, in a way, cricket actually opened up. Um, it's fold and, and liberalized, if one can call it that, the revolutionary new concept of 2020 cricket and how it came about. Um, we talked about the Indian Cricket League and uh, its not so successful debut in the first season. But of course, 2008 was really when this whole T20 journey really sort of took off in its own. Uh, the birth of the Indian Premier League. I mean, it was a coming together and a heady mix of top business, top Bollywood entertainment and sport at its best. Yeah, put a cathartic moment in the sport, the IPL, because things have changed so dramatically uh, since 2008 after the IPL came into into existence that is actually kind of altered the matrix of cricket internationally. And I'm, when I say matrix, I mean also the way the traditional game is perceived, played, how the itineraries are defined what players demand today, what authorities are willing to give them, everything. Everything is defined by this summer of cricket carnival called the IPL window now. Correct. And it's, you know, we're in the ninth season of the IPL, so things are settling down now, but they're not settling down to the old order. There's a whole new new order that has come into place. And obviously, as you know, there have been a lot of clones that have come up. So after the IPL, Australia got the big bash for a brief spell, we had the Bangladesh Premier League right. and a brief the spell, Sri Lanka the Premier Sri Lanka League Premier as well. League. Then you've got now, which is still going on, is the uh, Caribbean Premier League. You've got a tournament in South Africa. Yes, so the Ram Slam and also, of Slam. course, the Pakistan Super League. The Pakistan it? Super League, which just started, and there's a proposal to start a league in England. I'm sure, yes. They're, you know, they're how the last they, country not be How can they left, be left behind? Correct. So, dramatically altered the way the sport is played, perceived, uh, consumed. You know, consumed and obviously how it's impacted not just the fans and the administrators but also the players because you know suddenly players have got salaries even the also rans or who, players who are perhaps would never have been heard of they've also become kind of stars in their own right or at least making a, a huge livelihood yes and apart from all else you know I think all these leagues and especially the Indian Premier League has created an ecosystem it's become an industry in itself and therefore the the footprint of the league goes beyond just the playing field it extends into you know jobs a whole market scenario where all kinds of people are participants right but really I mean it was really back on 24th January was it in 2008 when the first auction the owners auction as we we got to call it then uh, was held wasn't it when um, you know big industrialists and top politicians in Mumbai in Mumbai Hotel absolutely I mean it was a power packed ballroom back there and you know and the auction was uh, telecast live was it uh, yes. You know, with with owners, potential owners bidding for teams that they wanted to own. This was something never seen, never heard of, <laughs> never seen and never imagined. Right. So, uh, we discussed about the ICL and how the the uh, the BCCI had to act post haste to prevent the ICL from, you know, expanding its territory. And they were stopped. Or from it, somebody else or internationally. From some, or from somebody else internationally. Yeah, so, they had to stop, stop the ICL and other potential leagues in their tracks. Right. And, uh, you know, get this get this act going and they had in Lalit Modi who I think was the perfect man at that point in time because he understood market dynamics he understood uh, concept of sport how it's consumed or will be consumed in India yes. in the 21st century he understood big business he understood big forget. business yeah. remember so he's he, he was one of the guys who brought ESPN into India right so you know one of the founding fathers so to speak yes uh, and because he had studied in the US, he understood a lot of uh, about marketing of sports. Yes. And the leagues, the league systems, how they work, the razzmatazz around them, all of that. But before that, you know, you had to go and sell the teams. And right. this was also done in, in a very, in double quick time. But what he managed to do is, and I think that was the, you know, the telling situation there or telling blow for uh, for the ICL, but also in, on the plus side for the BCCI. He got some of the best known business houses and the best known mm-hmm. faces together for the auction. Right. So you had, you know, the Reliance Industry Industries, Mukesh Ambani, the richest man in India, 
vying for a team. You had Vijay Malia, very flamboyant businessman. You know, Absolutely. whatever his current travels. Yes. In those days, he was the king of good times, the king as of he's good always times. been known. Yes. And a big supporter of sports in India. Correct. Let's not forget. Yes. So he's with interest in football, in uh, in football, racing, in horse, horse racing, racing, yes, and wherever else, Formula One, Formula as we know, or yes. at least in car racing. Correct. So he was vying for a team. Then there was obviously Lalit Modi's old college mate or schoolmate, college mate, Shahrukh Khan. Right. You know who's. Bacha of Bollywood, perhaps well, King Khan. <laughs> yes, so so he was in, and he was always interested in sports, and there was here was an opportunity for him to buy a team. Then he had then Preeti Zinta, who was also enormously popular at the top of her career, at, of her at, career at that yeah, point at that in time. time. Yes, and then other business houses coming in. These were the known faces, and then of course there was also the uh, there was also N Srinivasan, yes, who was part yeah. of the BCCI. Yeah. At that point in time, it seemed like a completely innocuous thing that he was buying a team. It was later to prove disastrous to the For IPL him, yes, and, B- led and to him, his, led to BCCI his fall, actually. led to his fall. But in subsequent years, but at that point in time, and let's be fair to him, the BCCI amended its constitution, constitution to allow him to purchase a team because one must appreciate that there was a hardship quotient to getting a quorum of buyers in such a short span of time. Well, it was an unknown concept, right? I mean, it people couldn't un- understand what it meant to own a team. It, it's not just an unknown concept; it was also mega bucks. Because right, when we saw in the auction, the the teams were sold for prices ranging from about sixty seven million dollars to one hundred and eleven, or almost one hundred and twelve. Well, that was the entire spectrum. One hundred and eleven point nine is what Mumbai uh, Indians uh, went Mumbai for. Indians went for one hundred eleven point nine million dollars. RCB, that is Royal Challengers Bangalore, for one hundred eleven point seven. Right, uh, just a bit behind. Uh, Mumbai. Mumbai. Mumbai, yes, I, I, and I think the biggest kind of <clears throat> battle was for getting the Mumbai franchise for one reason or the other. Correct, and uh, for a while it seemed that there might be a kind of head-on a head-on collision, collision between, between Malia, Mr. Malia, Malia and, and Mr. Ambani. Correct. But you know, I think Mr. Malia realized that since he's also from Bangalore, it doesn't. It made more, much more imminent sense and perhaps why, to own know, a Bangalore Otherwise, team. perhaps you, you know you can go on bidding and end up still on the losing side. It's not going to help you. <laughs> so, so I, so that's the volume of money that came in. Well, ultimately, it was I think what seven hundred and twenty-three odd million that all the franchises was it were boggled from. people's minds from Mumbai to Melbourne to you know where <laughs> Marylebone Cricket Club. Correct, because absolutely. Because nobody ever thought that this kind of money could be generated in one sitting. One sitting, so to speak. Yes, you know, yes. just. Four five hour auction, and this is the kind of money you would get, and not just get the money. The money can come from various sources. It's the kind of people who were backing the league. Yes. So you had Reliance, Okesh Ambani, representing the biggest industry industrial house in India. Correct. And uh, some film stars, some other very solid businessmen. So all in all, it painted a picture of an India poised to kind of take off in a direction that was un unthought of. It was unthinkable, maybe even two days earlier yes. before it happened. Yes, it was a venture that was not just about sport; it was also about sports and entertainment, but it was also about sports and business. It was all three rolled into one. Yes, yes, and uh, and you know from there on, of course, there was uh, you know each moment and each step along the way was taking the IPL to another crescendo. I mean, the players auction and the Correct. icon players. I mean, you know, each team was assigned an icon player for their home city. Sachin, of course, being with the Mumbai team and uh, and yet these players weren't auctioned or traded. And, yeah. and and it was the bidding for the the rest of the players which made up the team. Correct. Again, something that we had never seen, heard or imagined. It had never happened earlier that there was a, you know, bully or a <laughs> bid made for players <laughs> like this in the right. league. There are people who are hired as professional cricketers. English county cricket has survived because of that. Yes. People have played cricket in Australia for their domestic Sheffield Shield and hired overseas players to come and participate. Or players would get drafted, as in the NBA and F- NFL. But yeah, but in cricket, I'm saying. Yes. In cricket, this was you would get overseas players to come and play for you in your domestic championships. That's right. That has happened. Yes. But for a league where players are auctioned. See, earlier when people played or players played county cricket, there was no auction. Right. You know, you the county contacted you, you negotiated yeah, your terms, contract, you went you and signed played. The, yeah, you signed the you document and, and you went and played the summer. If players left one county for another, it's because they got an offer. But to have an auction of players, and I must mention here, we, we talked about players and uh, uh, the teams being auctioned. So, I, I need to highlight this. So, we mentioned a few names, but also some other industry names. There's GMR, which bought... Delhi. Delhi, yes. There was the Britannia Group along with 
ഓപ്പേസിറ്റി വിച്ച് at that point in time didn't seem to matter because it was important for the bcci to get the league to going to get this going yeah to get the league going and i must you know so while we talked of this magnificent you know portrait that is being painted or i am also painting it that the ipl got off to a flying start with the ambani's with malia and so and so and all getting there it was not easy to get eight teams sold and therefore lalit modi had to use all his influence and relationship management right. to get at least two teams bought who were not they were not automatic buyers okay you know there were many industry houses big industrialists who actually thought that they might buy a house but they backed off when they saw the price so there was a little disbelief in the IPL that this could actually it could happen or work it could work at that cost right and you know i won't mention names but i know a few uh, you know big business houses or at least their promoters who for many years felt that this can never work this can this can be for real frankly work. yeah and the model which was worked out was was intricate and complex because the rights for television rights for for the ip was sold at a massive cost yes people poo pooed that saying you know how can you ever recover that money and this whole structure of the central pool and sponsor and pool, you know franchises earning out of the central pool earning out of the central pool and then ticketing who will get the money the in stadium advertising who gets the money so it was a you know it was a complex kind of a scenario where actually the franchise owners perhaps may not not even start recovering money till the third or fourth or fifth year and that was openly said so that was openly said so yes and therefore there were a lot of skeptics while there were some marquee names who bought into the franchises right. there were a lot of skeptics in fact i would say that the skeptics outnumbered the marquee i names. would say so too yes what worked for the ipl and what worked for lalit modi is that he had the backing of two or three of the biggest names from industry from business and two or three of the biggest names from glamour. cinema yeah. from the glamour industry yes and ultimately as it kind of took you know uh, evolved the ipl as you mentioned then the next big thing was the the players auction the players auction and and you know what's in it for the fans we talked about i mean 2007 the the first t20 world cup we had the big four missing in action yes and yet here for their own domestic tournament the ipl you had the big four you had them put up on a pedestal as as the Actually, icon big eight <laughs> <laughs> yes of course for eight teams but yes. you had them you know termed as the icon players so yes. you know clearly the fans really weren't going to miss out on their cricketing heroes in t20 action no i think more than just missing out they were given a pedestal yes so that and there was a you know there was a kind of a strong reason for doing it because the threat the threat perception was still strong that there was the icl which had not shut down yes. it was still existing and some other leagues could start who can stop a league from starting anywhere absolutely i mean and how do you prevent your marquee players your big big ticket guys from migrating to some other league so you give them a pedestal on which they are recognized and lauded as icon players and therefore they are part of your system you know it is the feel good factor correct and then you get 15% more than the highest bid player from your team well that said i asked but also it would have been a uh, blasphemy to have uh, you know the likes of sachin being auctioned i mean i and think also, i think the public wouldn't just allow abs- that frankly absolutely i agree with that so yeah. therefore you know you kill two birds with one stone yeah. you didn't put them up for auction right so that you know you, they, they don't start comparing themselves with each other also exactly you can't put a price to such i mean uh, for some things he's just priceless so and so you had saurav you had rahul dravid you yes. had vvs lakshman you had all of them you right. know as marquee players yes. virendra sehwag right and uh, ms dhoni of course so you got them to get the most money so as an icon player you can't get less money right you know than your top most player Correct. otherwise what is the use of What's being the, an icon yes yes you know so they got i think you know the so i think in a way they had all bases covered whether it was the mathematics the it was perception very, value it was very good thinking at that point in time mm-hmm. because there was so much opposition especially from the conservatives and the and the traditionalists one was it was anathema for them to even believe that players could be auctioned yes you know in fact some players and also and we all saw it happening live in front of our television yes and yeah. it was telecast live so yes. it had people riveted i mean you know they were transfixed yeah. to see this kind of auction going on right. of players Tol and some molke bol as Tol you call it bol. yes and some of the players also i mean i remember that some players you know themselves were upset 
that not, they were being put a number to and, and, uh, and it didn't work or and, it didn't and, you know, are we cattle that we should be auctioned you know because you have I would have thought so yes a lot know, of players would have of taken in India and especially if ultimately livestock. it you didn't get picked up I mean what about the ignominy of not getting picked up and the fact of you see traditionally you might get a central contract now almost all cricket boards give a central contract to their players categorizing them as a b c whatever right. depending from country to country yes those in category a get an annual retainer which is more than category b and which is more than category c so a sachin tendulkar or an ms dhoni at that point in time would be and dravid would be in category a and say a piyush chawla or an amit mishra or some such player would be in category b or c right but their match fees were the same mm mm-hmm. there was no difference in their match fees when they played for india whether for an odi or for a test match the match fees were at par right here this was being turned on its head you know you could get a player who may not may not have played more than 5 matches for india mm-hmm. but is getting more money in the auction than somebody who's played 55 matches for india because the perception would be that this player has greater value for me as a match winner so that was the kind of drama that was played out in the auction suddenly there was a ah, what's happening can this be true you know that kind of factor came in right that was the the first impact of the auction that happened that's really i asked that you mentioned that point we'll just take a quick short break here before we come back and discuss this more did you know that some termites in africa have a pleasantly minty flavor did you know that india's largest music festival was in a way conceptualized in estonia did you know that the awesomest chips in the world are found only inside us prisons hello i'm chuck i'm shrikeet and i'm narain and together we are simplified a podcast that helps you appear smarter to an audience that knows no different or give you some stuff to talk about at parties we are ultra cryptidarians and if you don't know what that means then tune in to simplified with a b on itunes audio boom or your favorite podcasting app episodes out every fortnight welcome back to the cricket wala chronicles we continue discussing how the first ipl season back in 2008 really unfolded right in front of our eyes i mean it was mega bucks big names the biggest in cricket business bollywood and sport and it was just unthinkable on so many different aspects and yet as the player auction unfolded and the teams were lined up i mean there was a flurry of promotional activities each team unveiling their name their logo their jersey the marketing and promotional hype but at the same time i asked in that uh, you know in that summer of 2008 there was a lot of fear and and, and anxiety and anticipation on what exactly was going to happen when the first match would be played in the IPL 2008 i think there were two reasons for that one is that you know t20 had never been played in india apart from the icl which it had you know just about come around right uh, but on the other hand we had seen t20 in the world cup and we'd seen india win so there was an excitement about t20 but there was also that little lurking fear and i think more not so much in the fans as in the players themselves and team owners and everybody else associated around the around the league yes remember what had happened was the ipl or the bcci effectively quashed any competition by getting barring i think two guys who were international you know terrific players i mean they would have been mega stars even in in the ipl which is inzamamul haq mm. and brian lara yes who were with the icl right and both recently retired in that sense mm-hmm. so otherwise they had everybody everybody yes i mean they had all the indian players which was the biggest allure yes. for indian fans the best had, of international talent as well even the recently retired shane won adam gilchrist glen magra yes. matthew hayden matthew hayden yes they were all there so the biggest assembly of cricket stars was there right also the west indians who have become mega stars now in the T20 league but not so big then yes were there people like chris gale and dwayne bravo and you know, some pollard. of them the pollard yes. some of them were pretty young yes. but coming around the south africans were there so the it was almost like you know the the entire cricketing universe was there right and therefore i don't think the fans were very excited about the fair they might see what might the action that might happen the problem and the fear the lurking fear for the administrators was that over a 6 7 week tournament can the excitement be sustained remember the world cup that was played was less than a month yes yes in duration this was going to be almost twice that much correct 7 to 8 weeks was 7 to 8 weeks yeah. with teams made up of you know it was a mix and match it was a uh you know it was the first time you were playing against each other you know with one another there I mean, is a sense of loyalty to country and team yes. which is almost automatic you know when india is playing every indian wants to support the indian team yes 
when teams are representing a city and are made up of players from all kinds of places correct then building up that loyalty takes a little while for sure i mean it, these are all these were all new concepts for us as spectators i mean and for franchise owners and the coaches and the captains the biggest question was how would my team gel right and i can tell you if you look at what happened in the first season that it's not easy it might you might feel that you've got a bunch of big stars with you and you can therefore win the tournament it doesn't necessarily happen but how do you actually lead a team with such cultural diversity so what happened i mean just to give you a little insight into this the first match was kolkata versus bangalore kkr versus yes. rcb at bangalore yes brendan mccallum was playing for kkr then smashed the 158 of 73 deliveries of course they I won the match that. yes kolkata took, went off on a flying start yes were top of the table almost till the halfway mark and finished last Correct. that season the first season yes right yes Hyderabad in those days finished last in the first season, mm-hmm. and the next season they won the tournament. Won the tournament, yes. So it's a very topsy turvy tournament, and certain. What you know, about Rajasthan Royals? The first Rajasthan season Royals they went on to win the tournament. The, the cheapest team paid the least amount of money. Yes, for, with no big stars in their team. With no big stars. No glamorous owners. Correct. Yes, they were called the Moneyball team, and you and know it's a moniker that stuck and, and with them for give, many years. You have to give credit to the captain Shane Vaughan, who was, course. I think, a his genius. leadership was yeah. par excellence. Yes, and and the support staff and stuff like that. Correct. But so therefore, the sense of anticipation in the fans was, I think, positive. They wanted to see great cricket. They've got the great players there. Right. How the how their teams that they supported would turn out or play out, nobody knew. Or there was also the excitement of seeing. big stars playing other teams right so if saurav ganguly was leading kkr you know you still wanted to see him even if you were from mumbai and also and it, was a, it was a clash being pitted against sachin versus saurav or dravid versus sachin that kind of a thing correct yes. and see and there were some inbuilt kind of uh, uh, processes or rules that were very interesting to me you couldn't play more than four, four overseas players. players yes so you can't pack your team with eight foreign players and well, say no well let's not forget the whole idea of IPL was to that help was a, domestic cricket that was wasn't touted it? Yes. yes so they had to have in their squad 16 players who were from india from india at least 16 and at least i think seven or eight or more more than that from the under 22 batch yes uncapped players uncapped yes. players yes so i mean you know and there was the, a cap on how much money you could spend on buying Correct. your players so you know the rules currently and the, the checks and balances were in place currently the cap place. is 9 million dollars yes yes and just just to kind of give you a little kind of insight into what it means the cap for players player purchases in the big bash is 1 million dollars as of today so the ipl by plain linear calculation <laughs> is 9 times bigger of course i mean so i mean these were the kind of things that were built in and I therefore i mean it's openly acknowledged today that players are willing to retire to keep themselves fit for the ipl window every summer and so. other leagues also now yes so and therefore while it was part of the domestic structure of indian cricket it is yeah. a domestic tournament yes. it had a very rich international flavor for sure but also you know looking at providing a platform for young indian talent to come through now whether how successful it has been can be open to debate mm-hmm. i can give you several examples of players who've come good through the ipl and therefore made a mark or but, not or not right or you could say but you know why only 10 why not 100 so that's a that's a different argument in itself but i think what it did is it expanded the horizons for players for coaches for you know team owners obviously they got yes. into you know doing other businesses apart from their core business <laughs> they got into sports which is good which is good and there was a derivative effect of uh, uh, of the ipl on sports in india which is that seeing the example of ipl other sports started creating their own leagues i mean it was a set template for other sports and really. also the earnings for other sports persons went up yes i mean it brought sports to the front pages of mainstream newspapers so while say. people from other sports may not earn as much as a dhoni or a you know as a sachin or a kohli mm-hmm. but they are earning i think maybe significantly more post ipl and and you know sports becoming mainstream oh, in general humongously more than yes. what they would have otherwise and i'm talking of players from kabaddi even from badminton or boxing hockey or hockey yes i mean otherwise they would have been languishing at the bottom of the ladder it, all of a sudden it was money. it was not looked down upon to say you're a sports person or an athlete as a career option i mean it, you made sports a professional career correct and therefore what happened obviously with the ipl is it created an ecosystem you need to you needed to have you know the support staff now 
many teams have a support staff which is almost as strong as the team itself yeah, or yeah. a very lean lean, lean or a very staff lean. Yes. it depends on your philosophy correct on the you know on the franchise philosophy but it also created because each team became a vertical business in itself right and therefore it created a lot more jobs and you know apart from that the league being a league being played for 7 8 weeks at different venues created you know an ecosystem where you needed all kinds of participants apart from the players and the franchise owners and the bcci officials you needed vendors for one thing or the other say right. for instance catering i mean catering merchandising, merchandising cheerleaders security, secure, cheerleaders it was i mean know, it really created a whole different ecosystem around itself absolutely. for the host cities for the host countries for i mean in 2009 ipl moved to south africa for you know the general elections that were happening in india Correct. but I mean it's openly acknowledged that tourism in South Africa grew by 26% in just that year alone or the UAE in 2014 yes absolutely you know, so the tournament was played there you know so of course it's had a lot of benefits attached to it yes. um the IPL uh, and and what it brought about i mean it went on to become the most attended league in the world it um, became the sixth most most highly valued sports property in the world yeah, in, in and, the first few years exactly so i i wanted to highlight this point puja that when it took off there was a lot of skepticism whether it'll succeed is it a one season wonder because the first season was a you know rollicking success yes, it went from strength to strength brendan mccallum making 158 or 73 delivery was a high octane start correct you know i mean people were as i mentioned earlier transfixed it's an unforgettable match unforgettable yes. match and and that actually is what set the momentum for the it tournament it set the momentum for the rest of the tournament and then rajasthan royals winning yes in a tense final you correct. know very last over finish yes and such was the appeal of the ipl in the first season that people didn't watch anything else the television ratings were the highest it was higher than any saas bahu or beti beta whatever Correct, series yes, the hindi yes. hindi soaps that used to dominate and the slot between say 637 till 11 was just taken over by Correct, the ipl yes. so much so that in seasons 2 and 3 and perhaps even 4 film producers hindi film producers or indian film producers whichever language in, you know you we made films in Correct. they were there were no movie releases for those they eight just, weeks they were scared because your box office takings would kind of would take out. a hit for it would sure take a big hit yes. so that was the appeal of the ipl it just grew from match to match in first season became a huge success and of course that success was replicated in the second season when it seemed that you know this can never work out because it's going to south africa and who'll watch ipl matches being played in south africa but indian the indian diaspora certainly and cricket audiences the world over Correct. watch matches even in south africa it helped that the time factor helped india yes it worked right just it for just, our prime time it just time. worked right for our prime time yeah. but even in season 3 when it came back it was a big success and four so in terms of eyeballs television viewing in terms of sponsorship in terms of the industry growing so to speak the ipl industry yes. the first four seasons or five seasons you was know was a runaway hit i mean it, run, it in just, 2010 uh, you know the ipl was the first sporting event to be broadcast live on youtube correct i mean that's opening up a whole new audience to to your event so channels in england started doing ipl shows while the ipl was being played here right. and obviously the bcci started you know kind of carving up the rights and selling yes. it differently and then of course so i feel i mean you know i don't have the actual figures for this year's ipl as yet we don't have it yes uh but there has been something that you know maybe the eyeballs have reduced it can happen it may have happened i think there is a you can't keep growing exponentially year after year there will be a time when you plateau i think it's also you know for any business for any business there are cycles in which you go through Correct. the profitability there's peaks and troughs always yes yeah there will be peaks and troughs i think also that uh, the ipl is made for television so live spectatorship at the ground is great and it's very great it's very important for players for performers performing artists need audiences Correct. to be at their best yes. but essentially you need the television audience which is there that's what drives the ultimate that's success that's what drives that's what drives the ultimate success and let's not forget that in the digital age the way sport is being consumed is not just watching television you also follow the game on on digital pla- on the digital platform yes, on your handsets on your, sa- on your smartphones on yeah. your smartphones so when it's all taken together i think the ipl remains unmatched in its consumption by fans anywhere in the world 
for cricket correct absolutely and and you know that said also the kind of uh, figures and research and surveys that have come about i mean 2015 it is openly acknowledged by bcci that the ipl apparently added 182 million dollars to the indian gdp yes you know and and not just the financial aspects but the the quantum benefits that the ipl has had for so many different levels of people categories of people whether it's young talent the ecosystem that it's created so i think you know if one was of course it's not without its share of controversies and uh, everything else that has hit the ipl but let's not forget that it is a great tournament um, i don't know if if calling it a league is the right thing because it's really a short burst of 8 weeks and not traditionally a league as we've seen it in the west but i think yeah. it's a, it's a great tournament with you know innumerable benefits to different stakeholders uh, that are associated with the event and of course we'll we'll come on to talk about the many discoveries that we've seen uh, coming out of the ipl um, stage at a world level i think it i think it's helped a lot of young players find their you know kind of material so to speak it's been just the kind of platform that showcases talent because the attention of the world is riveted on it uh, it's not about whether a player or b player who shines in the ipl will become a great test player or a great one day player or even play those formats at all that's not the point the point is it showcases it showcases talent young and old alike it compels attention and if it compels attention then at least if you're a young talented cricketer you find people taking greater interest in you and therefore you might open it might open up new channels new avenues for you yes and i there mean are, there are several examples of that as we know so while you know which which i'm sure we'll discuss in in a, in a future episode there is an underbelly that uh, has you know that as is with most things as is with more things and most things and they, they've been seriously damaging yes of course and year after year and there's year after something year. new that's cropped but up but there are also there's also this the the plus side of it where uh, a lot of players found they groove so to speak and went on to achieve greater plaudits and laurels for themselves for the countries that they represent and of course for the sport that they play yes of course and you know how it brought in new audiences to the sport or the the big canvas uh, that it gave to young talent to uh, to shine the, the the opportunity to play amongst uh, veterans to play with icon players i i think all of these were just um you know unthinkable concepts back then so it, it was a completely new um, canvas that was being unfolded right in front of our eyes so but that said and more uh, coming up on the cricket wala chronicles with ayas thank you for listening in signing out pooja from the fan garage cricket wala chronicles is available on itunes audio boom youtube the ivm podcast app and many other podcasting apps that you may like Hey man <laughs> just help me out man i need some i need some podcast man i haven't had a fix in a week just need some don't you worry about it i got podcast galore for you man just go to ivmpodcast.com you can also find us on facebook twitter and instagram thanks man i'm going to check it out